What's up, hobby friends, and welcome to the fourth installment in my video series of how I paint my blood angels. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on painting the apothecary, largely the white armor, and then how I tackle the blood vials and tubes on the model. Everything else I've painted on this model when we're talking about the gold trim and detailing, the green gems, the silver metallics, the black casing on the gun, and the base have all been covered in my previous three videos on my Blood Angels Infantry, the Dreadnought, as well as the Power Weapons. So if you want to know how I painted those, I recommend checking those videos out in my channel as well. So for the white armor on the Apothecary, I'm going to start with a base coat of graphite just to get some really deep shadows. And then we're going to airbrush the highlight with medium sea grade from AK, and then pale blue. And then I'm going to um, just do a quick sharp highlight with greenish white on the shoulders, the backpack, and the head and the torso. I'm not gonna go overboard with the white largely because I do wanna make sure I give myself room to refine with some hand painting, but I do know that the jump from pale blue to greenish white is pretty big. So I wanna at least get some greenish white with the airbrush onto the model. And once we apply our oil pass, which will knock it back a little bit, that gives me some room to then quickly work up the greenish white into the pure white for the armor highlights. And just like with the red armor, I'm gonna finish up after the airbrush step with some oil washes to black line. I'll be using the same oil color, uh, Payne's gray, nice and fluted. The only real difference now is rather than be a little bit more carefree just in terms of letting the oil finish on the armor. I want to make sure that after I apply this oil, I go back in and I really neaten up any sort of puddling or pool. I don't want this to stain the white too much. I really just want this to black on. Just pay attention when you're doing the oil step on the white armor. Make sure that you're not oversaturating a surface, and that if it does um, sort of start to pool, just go back in with a damp brush and some mineral spirits and just clean up those edges, clean up those large flat areas. So once we're done with the oils, we're gonna go back in with our highlighting. First, starting with the pale blue and focusing on some of the larger armor panels, particularly around the feet where the airbrushing might have gotten a little muddy. I'll apply a few highlights on the backs of the legs as well, focusing on some of the edges and more prominent raised surfaces. From there, we follow up with greenish white and continue to focus on some of the most raised armor panels. And from this point on, I'm really focusing on the shoulder pad, the helmet, the top of the torso, as well as the jump pack. Once we're done the greenish white, I'll finish up with a final highlight of pure white, focusing on the helmet and the shoulder pads. From there to tackle the vials, I'm going to start with a base coat of AK's Tenebus Gray, and then apply it to the vials as well as the tubes on the backpack. From there, we're going to go in with some reddish black, and we're going to start by establishing the level of the fluid or the liquid in the vials. You want to make sure that it's relatively level in terms of horizon to the base. Although if there is some motion to the model, you want to account for the flow of liquid, curving it in the vial or the jar, depending on the actual motion and gravity of the piece. We're going to go all the way around, and once we've established that level, bring the reddish black all the way to the bottom. Our next highlight is using burnt red, and we're just going to be highlighting from the surface level of the liquid. From here, I'm going to start to begin to think about bands of highlighting, almost as if you were tackling non-metal metal. Typically, I'll pick two or three prominent highlight lines and begin to establish those bands of highlights in the liquid. From there, my next highlight is blood red, and I'm going to continue highlighting first the levels of the liquid and then continuing with the bands that we established with the burnt red. The goal isn't to highlight the blood red all the way through, but to start introducing this almost reflective highlighting in the liquid 
to help stimulate the surface of the jar or the, the vial and the refraction of the light passing through either the plastic or the glass material. And once I've highlighted the red, I'm going to go in with some mixes of tenebrous gray and pale blue to highlight the reflections on the surface of the vial. So I'll start with, and this is about a 50-50 mix of the two, and I'll start to establish the, the two primary dots of reflected light, as well as start to introduce the, the band highlighting running down each of the sides. From there, I want to start introducing more and more pale blue into the mix to begin highlighting brighter and brighter. And where necessary, I'll go in with a little bit more tenebrous gray diluted to help smooth out and fade or transition the edge where necessary to soften up that highlight step. It's useful to think of this vial at this point right now as if we're painting a non-metallic surface. Consider how reflections appear on cylindrical and spherical surfaces and then highlight accordingly. When in doubt, it can be useful to look at references for scientific or laboratory vials and to see how reflections appear on those jars and vials and use those to help dictate how you highlight it on the model. And the goal is to work up to pure pale gray. And as you go brighter and brighter, you can go sharper and sharper with your highlights and your specular dots. And you can see how I approach this on some of the other larger vials and tubes on the backpack as well. And once we finish the model, we're going to go in with some final glazes and nuancing with the airbrush. I started with a little bit of Gucci Violet because I've used it on all my models. I wanted a unifying color that carries its way through. I tried not to go too overboard with this because the purple is fairly strong on the white. So just a little bit, um, primarily in the deep shadows, before following up with some tenebrous gray to just knock back some of that intensity of the Gucci Violet and then just to deepen the shadows a little bit more on the white armor. I focus a lot of this glaze on the back of the model, particularly on the bottom part of the legs, underneath the backpack, the torso, and the shoulders. Although you also want to make sure that you go in and nuance things like the bottom halves of the weapons, as well as the side and back of the head and under parts of the torso. Painting white armor really isn't that difficult, especially if you're focusing on a more tabletop battlefield ready quality. A lot of it comes down to the prep work using the airbrush and oils to do, I would say, 60 or 70% of the work, and then going back in by hand and applying some final highlights and some nuances with the airbrush. Just like with the red armor, it's all just about the prep. The more you can do with the airbrush, the less you have to do by hand. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more awesome weekly content. If you want to check out my other social media platforms, I'll make sure to have links in the video description below. And as always, until next time, happy hobbying.